Okay, I've got one other thing that I want to do today. Um, we, we are saying welcome home to Travis and Laura. Um, one of the things that I, I absolutely love and absolutely hate about the way God uses our church is that God raises up people in our church and then he sends them out. And it's an awesome thing to see people being raised up in our church. And we have missionaries that have come in our church and gone overseas. But we also have missionaries that have been raised up in our church and gone to other places in the United States. Okay, and, and you, something that you guys need to understand is that the United States is a mission-receiving country. Okay, that means we have more missionaries coming to the United States than we are sending out from the United States to other countries. Okay. We have got a very hard and jaded heart in America to the gospel. Okay? So when God raises people up, I get really excited, and then he takes them and sends them elsewhere. Okay? Now, that's, I think that's the way it's supposed to function, because it's not supposed to stay indoors. It's supposed to go out. Okay? Um, so I've asked Travis and Laura if they would just come and share quickly with us some of the things that God is doing with them down in Denver and um, and, and the different opportunities that they have. So, Travis and Laura, if you would come and share at this time. So, hello. So, how many of you have been asked by Pastor Glenn Saturday night to talk on Sunday? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just us then? A couple? <laughs> For the word, my Bible's too heavy for your this. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna go first really quickly. Um, I want to ask you guys um, what you would do if God asked you to do something really big, and you're like, "What? Like, I don't understand." For me, that was prison ministry. I don't know, six or seven years ago, I just heard the phrase prison ministry. I wasn't um, real active in church yet. I was still receiving word. I was still seeking and I'm like what on earth so I googled the nearest prisons Deer Lodge it's a men's prison the nearest women's prison is Billings it's six hours away I'm like okay God that's real funny thanks so I just kind of <laughs> tucked that aside didn't think of it much um, going to this church Travis and I go to went to this church when we lived here um, huge blessing the um, opportunity came up to be part of a women's mentoring program here and I was very blessed to get two mentors. I got Mary Lou. Mm -hmm. Mary Lou, we <laughs> love you. Um, she has a heart for prison ministry, and I was given Jeannie, who has a heart for teaching. Little did I know then that I would be needing both of those significantly when God says, oh, I think you should move to Denver. Me, I go, ah, I get to go to Denver. Travis is like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> Um, through a lot of prayer, a lot of soul searching, God making it completely obvious, a really heart to heart conversation with Glenn and Christy, which, you know, as a mature spiritual Christian, you probably, if God's calling you to do something, talk it over with your spiritual mentors, your spiritual leaders, get confirmation. Um, it was very difficult. It was a really difficult conversation us to have because we love it here. I'm probably going to stop, but love you guys love the church i recognize most of you here some of you are like who are these clowns up here but whatever um we do consider jesus community our home and so we moved to denver it was it was kind of neat it was something that i wanted to do for a long time i love big cities in my mind i'm thinking <laughs> it, you know my god god answers prayer and i've been there about a year and i heard prison ministry again and i called up Jeannie instantly and i called up mary lou and i go I've been here a year. I've been so disobedient. Oh my gosh. And they go, no, no, no. You were being prepared. You were being prepared. And it's true. When I moved there, um, Travis came three months after I did because he's a hunting guide. And I said, God, Denver's huge. You have to help me find a church. I don't care where I live. I don't care what happens. Help me find a church. And he did. I went to one church in the entire Denver area. Was there six million people there? Three million? There's churches everywhere, though. When we were talking with Glenn and Christy, who had lived there, you're from there, right, in the area? Yeah. Says, you know, Denver's unchurched. They need really strong Christians like you to go help them. And I'm thinking, Denver, it's, there's churches on every corner. But Denver worships the creation. They don't worship the creator. Yeah. 
the skiing, the Broncos, the mountains, the outdoors. You know, they don't praise God, they praise those activities. Pray and for so, their souls, they worship the Broncos. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, um, you know, we go to this church and um, I, I start helping out with the volunteer team. There was 20 of us. Um, God really blessed that and there's now over 170. <laughs> And I hear prison ministry during this time, and so God gave us Google. I Google prison near me. I live 20 minutes from Denver Women's Correctional Facility. It's the um, intake prison for women, so it's all maximum security levels. Um, it's a very, very, very dark place. And I thought, well, I live 20 minutes from a women's prison. That's where I should probably go. But I don't recommend just walking into a prison and go, hey, I'm here to volunteer. What can I do? <laughs> um, that, yeah, that's not good. So I then Googled prison ministry and prison fellowship organization came up. Long story short, I now teach every week in a women's prison. I take the light and the prayers and the love that you guys have. And that, it's amazing to see the transformation of these women. They come in and they say, I'm a statistic. I'm coming into your class and I'm not going to be one of those people that comes to prison to be set free, and 10 months later, they're praying, they're giving devotions, they're studying their Bible. We um, had a very heated discussion on heaven and hell. It was fascinating, it was amazing, very respectful. And one of the ladies who had not met Jesus until our class said, she's kind of young, really sweet, she's like, guys, I don't need to be that person, but why don't we just pray about this instead of talking about it? <laughs> I'm like, I could have got up and said, then my work here's done. You guys are going to be fine. But then that class goes out and takes what they learn to other people in prison. And, you know, you think, maybe that's my reason for moving to Denver. I don't know if that's a reason. I know that's what God's called me to do. And I need to be obedient in that. Maybe it's the people I work with. I just learned in my cubicle row, we call it the cubicle farm where I work, I work at AT&T and God uses that as a means to pay the bills and allow us to do the ministry we do. There is a reformed Jew, a Mormon, myself, Muslim, and I call them recovering Catholics because she does go to a Christian church, but she's, <laughs> some of you might know what that's all about, but there are, there are six cubicles and five of us are so different and I think maybe that's my mission field. But whatever it is, whatever God's called us to do, even if it's a little whisper and you go, what on earth? And seven years later, it comes true. God has a plan. And I'll leave my part with a Bible verse that's extremely important to the women in prison. It's Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Um, so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and read it with me and look at it with me. But it says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being not for disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. You will call me and come, and, or you will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And this is the part that's our responsibility. You will seek me and find me when you search me with your whole heart. And those ladies hang on to that scripture as if it's their lifeline. And you know, God's called them to prison to minister. Maybe that's their calling. And that's what we help them through in the program that I teach with. But you know, I ask you to think about what your calling is, and if God has something for you and it's just a whisper, tuck it away, find a mentor. I'm glad you're all here at this great church because you have the spiritual leaders here that can help you with that. But I really do think the reason that maybe we moved to Denver was for this guy. So I'll let him take over. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to talk. <laughs> here, I'll put my stuff. Okay. So, um... At Summit Church, which is our, our church there in Denver now, um, if you walk up and you ask anybody, you know, what's Summit about, um, you'll hear that we're about the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. And we have three words up on both sides of our stage, um, reach, raise, and release. So um, you should hear that anytime you come in and talk with any of our volunteers. And so as I was thinking, last night at midnight, after being asked to talk. I asked you well before midnight. Actually, here's how it went down. I was in the front room and I was listening and I heard my name. And I, the last time I heard my name, I knew what was going on. So I jumped up and ran into the kitchen really quick. And they were quiet. And he's like, you've already been voluntold. So. But... Uh, you know, so as I was thinking back on this, um, I started thinking about those three words and the retrays and release. And 
when I think about reach, I think about um, when we lived here in Montana and how God used this family, uh, Jesus Community Church, to reach out to me. Um, I was lost. Um, I hadn't been to church in many, many, many years. Um, and there were several fa there were several folks in this um, congregation that uh, invited us over to dinner. And I started to learn about Jesus Community, and I found out that you could wear camouflage to church, and you could wear hats, and nobody would judge you. In fact, they'd welcome you in. And, um, started reading, and so they reached out to me, and um, then Glenn just talked about it, and it's the raising up, and raising up the me as a Christ follower, and getting me involved with the wood pantry with Matthew, and um, the men's Bible studies and stuff like that on Thursday nights, and really getting me involved and getting me to understand exactly what God's love was and how we're supposed to be used to show God's love to the rest of the world. And then came that point in time where he uh, released us and I was like, nope, not going. <laughs> but anyway, we ended up in Denver and uh, it was an absolute miracle that we found the church that we found. Um, we talked to a lot of folks as they come in for new newcomers, first timers down there at church, and you'll hear them, and they're like, "This is the 18th church that I've visited, and I just haven't been able to find a home." And we found a home immediately. And so, um, I uh, was three months behind Laura when she moved down there, and uh, I got home, and she's like, "Oh, by the way, I signed you up to be on the greeter team, so you're going to be standing at the door and you're going to greet people as they're coming in." I'm like. Okay, because that's what good husbands do, right? <laughs> Guest here. How do you think I'm going to volunteer team? Honey, you're going to serve on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, from there, I went to um, went to the usher team. So worked with uh, the ushers and got to know people as they were coming in. And then one day they came to me, and unfortunately, we're in a day and age where now we have to think about the security of our church family. And so they came to me, and they're like, we need a security team here at, uh, at Summit, and I think it's because I'm a big guy. People think I know something about security or something like that, or maybe bouncer. So they're like, we'd like you to start a security team here. So I took on the role and responsibility of starting a security team and learning all the, the laws and the roles and responsibilities for whether we wanted an armed security team or whether we just wanted a bunch of guys that could wrestle people down if we needed to. and. Um, you know, just working in that direction. And protecting my family became kind of my concentrated focus on that. And uh, that team grew quickly. It went from me being there every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Saturday by myself to all of a sudden now I had 12 guys that were working with me. And that was pretty awesome. And so then they said, well, you did such a great job with that. Now we want you to be um, our guest experiences hub leader. And I'm like, okay, what's that guy do? <laughs> and they're like, new position. You get to make it up as you go. <laughs> right. So um, I became the guest experience hub leader. And under that, I had the baptism team, the security team, our coffee bar. Um, uh, I can't remember. Ushers. Ushers. Yeah. Um, there was a bunch. There was like six teams underneath there. So about 50, 55 people that uh, I was responsible to make sure that we had the volunteers to cover our services. And uh, I did that for about a year. And the whole time I'm still working my job, I'm still a guide. So um, I've got to find leadership to take over, to make sure that these teams can be sustained because I'm up here from the end of August through Thanksgiving, you know. And now we've got online services and stuff like that. So now I can watch online, I'm like the eye in the sky kind of guy. Um, but I can kind of watch through there, but I had to find the leadership to, to make sure that these teams would be, uh, stay sustained. And then uh, what Laura didn't talk about it with her <coughs> role is that she, they had her, um, she was the coordinator for the dream team. Um, so she talked about growing that team from 20 volunteers to 170 volunteers um, and coordinating all of that. Well, she, she did such a great job. They're like, now we're going to make you our small groups director. <laughs> So that's what she's taken over now. So now she has 50, um, 50 teams or 50 small groups because at Summit we believe that, our, um, that life happens in, a, in family or in small groups. 
um, and that's how we believe that we will continue to grow our church because we invite friends and family and stuff like that from outside the church to come be a member of our small group. And I took on um, one of my favorite verses is Matthew 419 and he called out to him and he'd make him fishers of men. I'm a fly fishing guide. <laughs> That's like my life. So I started a small group, Fishers of Men. Guess what we did? We went fly fishing. <laughs> and it was an opportunity for me to reach out to a lot of my friends um, who were not believers and invite them to become a part of the family. And we would go fly fishing. We would do small devotional, devotionals. We'd, do, we'd pray for each other, things like that, and get them involved and understand the love of God and what what that means and that it's not about you know religion and it's not about whether or not um, you stand up or, or you sit down or you sing this hymn or this verse or whether or not you come dressed you know to the nines to church or whatever that it's about us it's about us being together it's about us loving on one another about us supporting each other raising each other up that kind of thing so I did that, um, and then uh, it was about six months ago. They're like, you've done such a great job with the hub leader. We want you now to become the coordinator for the volunteers. So now I took over her role, which that's kind of a role reversal. Once in a while, it's usually the other way around, and now I've got to live up to this, and I'm like struggling. <laughs> so um, now I'm the volunteer for, or I'm the, Dream Team Coordinator, uh, 170 folks. God is on the move in Denver. Um, so, you know, Glenn talked to us about it being unchurched. Um, and like Laura said, you go around and there's a church on every corner. Um, but the people don't worship um, God, they worship the creation. Um, but we are seeing big things at Summit Church, and that is our congregation's growing. We've added a third service on Sundays now. So now we have a 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Sundays, which is amazing. Um, we're actually in the process of getting ready to build another campus. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, and we just continue to join anything and everything that can get us out there into the community. Feed, uh, feeding the Hungry Projects. Um, we do something that's national on June 15th. It's called Serve Day. And so we join hundreds of other churches across the United States and we go out and we serve the, the town of, uh, or well, the city of Denver and everything around that. Anything from, you know, cleaning streets to painting houses to doing yard work, whatever it is. I but volunteer to organize a kitchen. That was super fun. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, he's just, um, he's asked us to be on, he's asked us to be the hands and feet. Um, for him, and um, we've taken that with a great pride, and you know, in in our hearts, uh, we know that this is where he moved us, and and why he moved us there. It's hard. I don't like the traffic, um, but uh, just knowing that we're doing what God's called us to do has been a, a huge, um, a huge blessing. And there's other things that are coming. I mean, I can feel it. You know, I can feel those conversations, and I have conversations with God all the time up on the mountain. Um, and one of those things that he's talking to me about now is uh, actually starting a retreat um, for pastors. So um, last year and the year before, in my fly fishing world, um, I found out that pastors really like to fly fish. There's a lot of them. Um, and so I've had those opportunities to minister to pastors on the, on the fly fishing string, which has been really, really uh, amazing um, to give them that opportunity to be themselves and to have somebody to talk to and things like that. And so um, that's one of the things that God's called me to do now is to start a, um, start a retreat, find some land, that kind of thing, um, and give pastors an opportunity to be ministered to as well. So that's kind of where we're at. And uh, what we're doing, and it's good to be home. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks for your prayers, yes. an opportunity to share. We appreciate it. 